Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm a past president of the North American Menopause Society, and I'm so pleased to be joined today by Dr. Cassandra Schufelt. She's an associate director at the Barbara Streisand Women's Heart Center. She's co-director of the Preventive and Rehabilitative Cardiac Center. She's a director of the Women's Hormone and Menopause Program, an associate professor at the Cedar sinai Medical Center, Smith Heart Health Institute in Los Angeles, and as well, she is president-elect of the North American Menopause Society. So we're glad that in all of her juggling, she's found time to talk to us. Welcome. Thank you. So Thank you. I'm going to play the role of your average woman who is aware about cardiovascular disease, but maybe not as much as I should be. And um, we hear a lot about the use of medications called statin in women. And I guess as a woman, what I want to know is how does my healthcare provider decide if I actually need to do this? And are there special things that are different for me as a woman than as my male counterpart? Yes. So a lot has changed in how we are prescribing statin therapy. And the old way was we just looked at the cholesterol panel and said, okay, your bad cholesterol is this high and therefore you need to go on a statin and here you go and walk away. And now... Um, since 2014 and more recently since 2018, there's been updates and we're going to walk through what the updates are, um, but it's looking at you as an individual and your individual risk. And that's the good thing. It takes into account that you're a woman. It doesn't just take into account the cholesterol panel, which also includes bad cholesterol and good cholesterol. So you've got your L for lousy, your LDL and your H for healthy. That's how I remember it. Um, your healthy cholesterol, but you also have your triglycerides but we also take into consideration other things such as your age, your um, blood pressure, whether or not you're already on a statin therapy or an aspirin therapy, whether you have diabetes and other risk factors that are specific to developing future cardiovascular health. So your doctor doesn't just now say, okay, let's get a cholesterol and let's start a statin. They have to calculate what we would consider a 10 year risk of heart disease based on those numbers. Well, what would make me different as a woman compared to a male counterpart? Is there anything else that's more unique in women that possibly will put me at higher risk of cardiovascular disease, either a heart attack or a stroke, and then statins might benefit me more because of that? Yes, there are. And there's an important thing to consider, which are risk enhancers. And these are things that kind of catapult you to a little bit of a higher risk for cardiovascular disease. And specifically for women, we need to take into consideration autoimmune inflammatory conditions. So if you have an autoimmune, something like lupus, we know these are more common in women, that's a risk enhancer. But specifically to menopause, premature menopause or going into menopause under the age of 40 is also considered a risk enhancer. And then what I always say is what happens in pregnancy doesn't stay in pregnancy. So if you had an adverse pregnancy outcome, and what do I mean by that? If you developed high blood pressure, had to deliver the baby early, um, the baby was a, a, a small baby itself, or you developed a more toxic pre, preeclampsia, which is an, uh, happens right at delivery, to, um, which is an overwhelming inflammation as well as high blood pressure that demands the baby to be born um, perhaps early. Those are now we know are risk enhancers for being on a statin, but also risk enhancers for your future cardiovascular health because just because you deliver the baby doesn't mean what happened goes away in your body. There's memory. Okay, so we talk about doing blood tests and knowing what your cholesterol score is. But are there any other tests that would be done that might sort of put me in the direction of, yes, you really do need to have a statin, or is it just all about the numbers? Well, to start, it is about the numbers because we have to calculate that a, that risk, 10-year risk calculator. But if you are reluctant or if you fall into what would be um, an intermediate category that we really wouldn't know, do you, would, would you really benefit from statin therapy? We can do a scan, and it's a very simple scan. It is a, a coronary artery calcification, or a CAC, C-A-C. And this is a, it is a CAT scan, but it is very low radiation, meaning it's similar to environmental radiation in an, air, in an airplane. It is um, not invasive, so you just have to lay there. And what it does is it scans the heart and will give you a score um, based on the calci calcium in the heart. 
And we know that a score of zero, there's no, there's no plaque there for, um, cal or no calcium there, and therefore a statin wouldn't be indicated. So that would give you reassurance that having a calcium score of zero, you, even though you might fall into an intermediate risk, you, don't, you wouldn't necessarily need a statin therapy. Okay, so let's now talk about side effects because we all hear about side effects, which make us as women maybe not want to take the medication. Is it different for women than men? Are we more likely to get side effects or different side effects? We are more likely to have myalgias or muscle aches. And that really wasn't known because women were very underrepresented in clinical trials of statins. So, but we are more, more often likely to get side effects of the muscle aches itself. So if you feel achy on the statin, but there are some good things to do to try to mitigate or even avoid some of those because not all statins are equal. We know that why one statin might be a water, more water soluble versus a lipid soluble, which means it breaks down with, with fat and that can kind of hang around and cause some of those aches in your muscle. So it's more like trying on a shoe. If you try on a few pairs, you're gonna find one that fits and you might not even have a side effect to that. As a clinician, we can also alternatively day dose it. And what I mean by that is you might not start out with the highest dose every single day. Your clinician might um, try to up titrate you and start out maybe once or twice a week at a low dose and then try to get you to increase slowly over time so that your body somewhat adjusts to it and so you don't have those side effects. I will so, say that I also look at medications because there are multiple medications if you're taking other medications that might interact with how that statin breaks down and that can cause some of those side effects. Okay, so my last question for you is, is that if I start a low dose and we get a little bit of a, of a decline, so things are a little bit better, is that enough? Like, or do we have to get to a certain point where I'm gonna see the maximal benefit. Isn't a little bit of a reduction good enough? Well, we always wanna get a woman on a moderate or intense dose if she falls into a high risk category or has had heart disease herself. So those are the higher risk doses. But if you are not able to tolerate those doses and the LDL cholesterol is very low, we, we know that there's, you know, we can go very, very low with that number and we're not fearful of it anymore. Very low means under 70, but sometimes we can even push it lower. And if you're getting that maximum benefit from those getting down into that category, um, while it would be ideal to go up higher, um, you're still getting benefit. You're getting benefit from being on a statin. And is there any low that's too low as we lower my LDL? Is there a point where I need some LDL for my brain or other parts of my body? How low can you go? Yeah, so we've, this is a new area, but it, but we've seen it very low, pushed very low, LDLs into the 20s and 30s based on wow. some of the other new drugs that have come out that are injections for lowering cholesterol. So we now know that we probably do, we do need some cholesterol around. It is the backbone of some of our hormones as well as our cell structures and you mentioned in our brain, but we are not fearful that going even that low could be detrimental. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I think empowering women to understand the importance of treating us as aggressively as our male counterparts is critical for our well-being. Thank you for having me. Bye for now.